Hey YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. Upper left part of your screen, you're gonna see those red lights go on. When they're off, we're racing. Here we go, Mission King of the Baggers, race number one from Coda. And we're off and away, and it looks like our pole sitter's got a good launch, even though he wheelies a couple times. So is it gonna be the 29 who leads us into turn number one? It is Hayden Gillum on the one, trying to go up the inside and grab third position. And it looks like he's gonna hold on to that. So good job by Hayden Gillum to come from the second row in sixth place qualifying, now up to third. That's a great start from Hayden Gillum, as you say. You can see Kyle Wyman has got his teammate, James Raspoli, right behind him here. And uh, out front though, O'Hara with a good start. And uh, Herfoss got shuffled back a little bit there, Greg. I believe he's fourth or fifth, but he's fifth back there right now. So uh, with Bobby Fong right behind him, these are the kind of the six guys you would expect to kind of separate themselves a little bit from the field. But Herfoss has gone all the way back to that sixth spot from that front row. And while his teammate is out front right now, trying to get away from those two Harleys, factory Harleys right behind him. Max Flinders, last time we saw him in New Jersey at the end of the season, a podium finisher on the yellow bike. Processional onto the back straight away we go. This is that long drag race. And of course you have Harley Davidson and Indian horsepower going after it. Tyler O'Hara behind the bubble of that big fairing. And of course the distinctive feature of those bags on the back of the bike. And you can see the bikes moving around as they approach 165 miles an hour into the hard braking zone. Yeah, and you can see they still just stayed in the same spot. Nobody was able to really draft or make any big plays. I know that uh, there's been some gearing changes on a couple of the bikes and as far as trying to get off these corners a little bit better. The unique thing about Coda, Greg, is we've got four really distinct slow turns, this being another one right here. This one doesn't lead on to a big straightaway, but it leads on to something that is gonna be a very, very fast right-hander as you see them go around the back of the paddock here in turns 17 and 18. So I know for the factory Harleys, they've been gearing their bikes just a little bit shorter to try to get off the corners a little bit more with those factory Indians. Tyler O'Hara, the 29, doing a great job putting a gap between himself and the rest of the field on the SNS Indian hmm. Indian Challenger. And out wide, a couple riders go up and out of the saddle. Yeah, Tyler ends up going real wide in our in this class here. These guys are allowed to go out over that curbing on the exit of turn 19 there, as well as that front straightaway. There is a drainage, Greg, on the outside of turn 19 that can make it. Uh, a little bit scary to get out too far, but you, you see Herfoss now has moved up to fifth. He's been able to get by Bobby Fong on that opening lap this year. But when you have a race like this and you got these six guys at the front, it's really important, I obviously, to try to win, but it's also important to get the points. So 29 is Tyler O'Hara, SNS, Indian Motorcycles. That's the challenger. He leads the way. He's got a nice little gap going on. Kyle Wyman, the number 33, on that Harley Davidson factory road glide. And being chased by the number one plate, his teammate James Raspoli, the 43, trying to find some room up the inside on Hayden Gillum. Nothing there. And one of the things you'll notice is that the rear brakes on these things are so large, they're the similar size to the front discs you would see on a sport bike. They're huge. Yeah. Some bikes even have oh. two. And Bobby Fong going up the inside. This is what we've seen from Bobby, Jason, yep. at Circuit of the Americas. Bobby, especially in this section, is able to take a lot tighter lines than a lot of the other racers. However, he's given that to, like, kind of put that tool in the toolbox of but, some of his competitors. And he does it again right here. You can see his entry into this big, long turn right where you're at the same lean angle for a long period of time. Bobby's able to really carve that Indian up underneath people. Let's see if he was able to do it there to Herfoss again. It looks like he was. He goes back past Herfoss and he takes a little bit narrower line coming down there uh, into that uh, turn 19 area as well. So, and James Raspoli now has got by Gillum. So James Raspoli up to third, Gillum back to fourth. You can see how the run goes up to the top of the hill here. Gillum's gonna be able to get in the draft and maybe pull out to the left of Raspoli as they get to the top. So the number one, looking for room, nothing. We were talking about Bobby Fong. He's the number 50. He's the fifth bike on track. That's the SDI Roland Sands Racing Indian Challenger. And it looks like Gillum, just with a different line choice. With about two and a half laps to go in Mission King of the Baggers race number one. 
And you've got to think about it too, Greg, when you say you see a little bit different lines. Think about how wide these bikes are compared to like the bikes that some of these guys have been used to riding in the past. It's, it doesn't really pay to follow, you know, to be able to look around and see what's out in front of a person. Uh, you see Gillum using those line choices as kind of a way of looking around. I'm really surprised to see Herfoss, but still stuck back there in sixth. So James Raspoli currently in third place as he gets the thing sideways, Hannah. They work really well together. They talk about things even when they're off testing. And, and, and one will be trying something while the other one's trying something else. And they come back with that information. Spoli starting to struggle with that rear grip. And if you're new to Mission King of the Baggers racing, as Bobby Fong tries to go up the inside on Hayden Gillum for position, that's the 50 versus the number one. One of the things I find interesting, Jay, is when you look at a traditional sport bike, generally we're looking at a front counter tooth sprocket of, of 15, 16 mm -hmm. teeth. On these bikes, on the Indian motorcycles, you can have 22 teeth on the Harley Davidson's wow. 26 tooth sprockets. And a lot of that has oh. to do with where the chain is in relation to the swing arm angle, taking a bagger and turning it into a race. Bike. Yeah, you saw Bobby Fong try oh, to take Herfoss. a shot. Yeah, Bobby Fong took a shot at Hayden Gillum, ran wide, opened up the door for Herfoss. Herfoss is them getting it sideways as they come out of that last corner. Top six guys still throwing blankets over him, and you can see Herfoss is through on Fong for the moment. A lot of times over the last couple years, we've seen that Indian bagger getting out of shape a lot as Kyle Wyman now looks like he wants to take a shot at O'Hara as they go down in turn 11. We've only got about a lap and a half left, and we've not really seen anybody take a shot at O'Hara. So Kyle Wyman now is definitely able to feel the draft off that Indian as they head down that back straightaway. That factory Harley pulls out to the left, Greg. Let's see if he could do anything with O'Hara when they get down to the braking zone in turn 12. Here comes Kyle Wyman. He's going to hold on behind him as they go sideways, but it's Herfoss who's starting to make some moves. Not a lot of room with those bags hanging off the back of that motorcycle, but Herfoss able to get it done. But up to turn one we go. With the wind blowing, we'll see who's got the deep corner entry. Yeah, well, Why? this is a really important lap for Tyler O'Hara, Greg, because like we said yesterday, we haven't seen this young man win in a little over a year, and uh, we know how capable he is of doing just that. So Troy Herfoss goes quickest lap of the race on that lap at a 15-2. Keep in mind, they qualified at a 15 flat, and right now Herfoss would like nothing more than to get by Wyman and try to make this an Indian 1-2. So you have four factory motorcycles and one privateer bike in that number one of Hayden Gillum on that Revzilla Motul Vance and Hines Harley Davidson. He's starting to lose touch with half a lap to go. So now the battle, it's Indian, factory Harley Davidson, factory Indian, factory Harley Davidson getting after it. Who is gonna have it to the end? Boy, exciting racing here in Mission King of the Baggers. Kyle might take a shot here to try to park her, uh, try to park O'Hare and he does. Herfoss is also trying to follow him in. So that's gonna be the thing right there. I felt like Herfoss would be able to draft both these riders in front of him. Now Kyle gets a great run out of that turn 11 down that back straight. He's gonna have to be a little bit protective because those Indians are gonna be able to try to get in the draft. And let's see, yeah, Kyle's going over to the left to try to, try to thwart any thoughts of them going down the inside. O'Hara is in deep. Raspoli trying to go up underneath O'Hara for third. All five of these riders with tons of flat track experience, no electronics on these motorcycles. It's all done with the right wrist. Has Kyle Wyman done enough? At this moment, Kyle's in charge, but Troy Herfoss has been hanging around and he goes up the inside on Wyman. Wyman has to lift. It looked like there might've been some contact. So Herfoss bullies his way into the lead. A good move for Troy Herfoss. Just and a, that might be it. Just a great pass. He set that up really early. He got down the inside of Wyman to where he wasn't able to try to tuck that Harley back in and Herfoss is on his way. So Troy Herfoss makes the move, able to move Wyman and gain that couple tenths of a second. As now the corners are running out, here comes Herfoss into the final corner we go. And he's got a couple bike like lead. For the 33, he's trying to square it up, but it's going to be Troy Herfoss who comes across the line with the big win here at Circuit of the Americas in our first Mission King of the Baggers race. What a move by the Australian late in this race to take victory by two tenths of a second. Kyle Wyman, he didn't lean on him and try to force the issue and cause himself to crash out. Boy, what a run by Troy Herfoss. Here's the results, two tenths of a second. Win for Herfoss over Wyman, Tyler O'Hara there as well. Rispoli and Gillum all within a second of that leader, the race winner. That's gonna bode well for this afternoon. Unfortunately for Bobby Fong, running off the track, he ends up in seventh place. We expect him to rebound.